our thank you guys for being the early birds today. Uh, welcome. We're talking about the introduction to TechSoup's website services, and we're going to share some success stories. Not me, but our team from TAP Network is here. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. I'm going to share with you on the next slide how you can engage today. Um, you are on mute, so if you have a question, please put your question in the Q&A. I know there's still some people will type them in the chat. I'm sure we'll be able to grab them as we move along. We are going to email the slides and the video replay by tomorrow. So check your email for that. And if you need the closed caption, go ahead and look at the bottom of your screen. You'll see the letter CC and you can turn on the closed caption. So I'm going to turn this over to Kyle Bark. Bar Bar oh, I can't talk today, Kyle. Kyle Barkins. He's the co-founder of um, TAP Network. And I'm going to put a link in there about our wonderful quad team. So if you want to know more about quad, I'll be putting a link in the chat room. Over to you, Kyle. Perfect. Thanks, Aretha. Uh, and welcome, everyone. Uh, just a quick agenda of what we're planning to go over today. Just some background on TAP Network, how we work with TechSoup and nonprofits like some of you on the call today. Uh, our custom website development services, uh, some of the, the programs we offer uh, discounted through TechSoup are like website maintenance and support hosting and security, how we face those um, those concerns. And um, we'll share some success stories, uh, some examples of sort of like before and after and different um, situations we've we've seen, come, we've come across in 15 years now working with nonprofit organizations. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up with a conclusion, some next steps and a special offer um, that we're gonna put out today just for attendees of this webinar. So just quick background on myself and uh, the co-host today, John, um, I'm, Come from a background more in marketing application development uh built websites for the going on 20 years now i've launched uh, a couple thousand websites at this point we actively host manage develop uh a couple hundred websites here at tap network at any given point um, i'm joined today by my co-host john hill who is our web project manager at tap network so pretty much any web project that comes across especially the ones through TechSoup, soup um you'll have it at some point in your in your time here the time, work with John, you'll, John will touch these projects and he's, he's really what helps make these, these websites a success here. Uh, TAP Network is an agency. Uh, we, we looked at, at um, we've taken a look at in the past, I don't know, like I said 15, 20 years now, how different businesses function and you know the, the amount of money they pay for the people that, that, that they work with or the agencies that they served. And we know that there's uh, you know, a need in the nonprofit space for that. So we've developed, uh, you know, services and solutions, and partnered with TechSoup to solve those problems in the nonprofit space, so to be able to deliver the same level of service uh, that you would get, you know, in that in that for-profit or enterprise business, uh, at you know a better rate from people that really understand your cause, your concern, where that money's going, and what what the different needs are for uh, nonprofit organizations. We also, in addition to nonprofit and with some example nonprofits here, we work with global innovation leaders uh, kind of across the spectrum. So everything from, you know, large solar companies and green energy companies, Denso, one of the companies that's a, um, you know, a multi-billion dollar company owned by by uh, Toyota to uh, nonprofit organizations that serve those same sort of green energy, clean energy spaces as well. All the, pro all the organizations we work with are mission driven. So state and local governments, municipalities, nonprofit organizations, for-profit organizations looking to make the world a better place. Um, our, our approach is, is a very community-driven approach. So we, you know, we work with, we partner with our, our, um, our clients, we call them partners, uh, and we see how, how they're trying to make a difference. So not just looking at their websites, not just looking at their you know, marketing campaigns or technology, but really what is, what is their goal? What are they trying to accomplish? How are they trying to make an impact? Uh, we pride ourselves on being a big part of making that impact with those organizations. How can we can help you today? You'll see this slide twice uh, through this, um, but it's got a link on the slide. You'll, you'll see these. Uh, Aretha will share this and the show notes as well as the recording after this webinar, as she said. Uh, in that, you'll have links to um, you know these different services so you don't have to worry about clicking around through TechSoup's website, trying to find us or trying to find where these services are. But we, you can see we run, it runs the gamut, everything from strategy to creative branding to running full inbound and outbound marketing campaigns, all the way down to things like PR and paid media, um, paid advertising. So I'll turn it over to John. He's gonna talk through why websites are so important for nonprofit organizations. All right, yeah. 
So uh, let's just kind of jump right in, talk about that. Uh, this is kind of where, this is where you can enhance in, engagement with your supporters and your community, uh, drive donations, attract volunteers. It's also uh, like a, it's a central hub for education and information about your cause, right? And these are all kind of why a website is so important. Website's also a location. It's accessible 24 seven anywhere in the world. This lets you reach a far wider audience than traditional methods. Um, couple that with website analytics, you can kind of see, uh, you can get all that data and insight on where your supporters are and what interests them. And then this will allow you to tailor your outreach and messaging for a better impact. Uh, and of course, accessibility and inclusivity, well-designed website, always ensures that anyone can uh, learn about your, miss your mission and get involved regardless of location or ability. Um, that's kind of just only the tip of the iceberg. You know, websites are a chance to amplify your voice and make a bigger uh, difference in what you're trying to do. Um, so if we go on to the next slide, we're going to dive into kind of the building of a website. So first, let's talk about what makes a great nonprofit website. We want a website that can grow with you, right? Of course. Uh, that's where scalability and flexibility come in. Your website should be able to handle increased traffic and adapt with your changing needs on both the front and the back end. Uh, you want to think of it as a living document, not just like a static brochure. Uh, the best nonprofit websites prioritize user experience or UX. Um, this means making it easy for visitors to navigate, find the information they need, uh, take action. So, Imagine someone coming to your website for the first time. Can they easily understand your mission or where to donate or volunteer opportunities in just a few clicks? That's kind of the user experience that we're going to be striving for. Um, and then finally, a great nonprofit also leverages integration opportunities. So this means connecting your website with tools you use, like the donor management software or email marketing platforms. This kind of streamlines your workflow and creates a more co cohesive uh, experience for you and your supporters. So uh, by focusing kind of on these three elements, you know, the scalability, the UX and integration, you can build a website that's really powerful asset for your uh, nonprofit. And now I will hand it back over to Kyle to kind of further go into these kinds of things. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we're going to go talk through how how, tech, how TechSoup and TAP approach um, website development, website design, and and talk through sort of the, what we think is a, a problem with like traditional website design and probably how a number of you on the call today have have, have built a website, develop, developed a website or seen this happen, um, some of the challenges here. So like, first of all, it's like difficult to plan, right? So everything's constantly changing. If we look back at things like COVID-19, a lot of nonprofits had a, a really a real problem and, and for-profit organizations adapting to that and having their websites adapt to that because they didn't have the right technology in place. They weren't planning for those types of things. And they don't really know what the future looks like. A lot of times they also only look at what's happening in front of them right now and they don't start to plan for future growth. So they might put a great looking website together today to talk about how what you know their organization and why it launched. But you know, a year from now or two years from now, they're going to want to be able to drive volunteers and drive membership or host webinars or host in-person events. Um, or so even sell things like through an e-commerce store. So it's hard to plan that because you don't know where you're going and you don't really position yourself um, for that. I'll probably use some house analogies as we go through today. It's probably it's like sort of my signature, I think. My my team here definitely gets tired of hearing those things. So as we go through, I'll start talking about things like, you know, putting a solid foundation in place. So, you know, you want to make sure that maybe you want to grow your house over time. You want to make sure that you've built a solid foundation, put it on, on a solid ground. So if you want to add you know, a patio or you want to add, a, you know, a second story or another bedroom or a garage or something like that, you're able to do that and you're not, you're not stuck in that, um, you know, smaller environment or whatever. A lot of times with these uh, traditional design, your traditional website design, you're going to hit these high costs and long timelines because you're trying to plan for the future. You don't really know what that holds. So you might bite off more than you can chew. Hey, I want to put a membership um, platform in place. Hey, I want to make sure that this has, um, you know, automated marketing involved in it and, and like you don't have a, a database currently of people to market to but you want to bite off more than you can chew right because you have these high aspirations so we'll see people often overspend uh and as a result of that and those that that those lofty initial goals the timeline gets pushed out longer and then once it finally launches you've gone you know three six nine twelve months you haven't attracted any new members you haven't attracted any new donors you put these great systems in place and there's nothing in them uh and then when you do that the, you know, do either of those two things or you miss those those points, 
uh, you're also limited to the updates you can make after the website launches. So if you've you know, built something in such a way or on a proprietary platform and you haven't really thought through through things and, and put in a, a system that can be added on and, and improved over time, making those improvements is harder. So you're going to spend more time, you're going to spend more money, and you're going to have to do this over and over and over again. So this is where you often see nonprofits putting an RFP out every three to five years to get the website redone because it's now outdated. And a lot of times it'll be outdated almost right when you launch. So the, the approach we take is, is this kind of constantly improving, um, always iterating approach. So we look at, um, if you kind of look at this graph here, you can see this, this orange line, which is just us growing over time, your website growing over time, your website improving versus the typical, uh, you know, relaunch thing where it's like every one and a half, two years, you're redesigning, rethinking the website. Hey, we don't do this thing anymore. Hey, we do this thing now. How do we add that to our website? Oh, the content no longer makes sense. We, we sort of turn that approach on its head and go through this, what we call growth driven approach. That starts with strategy. So really understanding where you are, where you want to be, um, you know, looking at other competitors in your space, looking at your uh, other nonprofits that might be partners with you that you can sort of build off of and learn from looking at your audience, as John was saying earlier, looking at the expe expected user experience. What do you want someone to do? Not just when they come to your website, but when they engage with and interact with your organization. So start with that, that baseline. With that, knowing that, we take what we, we sort of call like a minimum viable product. It's not really a minimum viable product. It's There's definitely more to it than that. But it's a launch pad website where it's enough for you to get started. It's got information about your organization and the people that, that are involved, the people that, that you're working with. But maybe you don't have the information on like your impact report or where the money is going or has gone in the past or the impact you've made at this point. Maybe you don't have, um, you know, like I said, a membership portal or e-commerce yet. It's enough to get you started to get something out there to put your best foot forward. We launch that and then we look at, we start to plan over time. Okay, now that this is out there, what do we want to do with that? What do we want to add to this? What features would help this website? All the while we're looking at your analytics. We're looking at how the website's performing. We're looking at what people are doing on your website, how they're engaging, where are they leaving? Where are they coming in? You know, if they're donating, what page are they donating from? What page did they come from before they donated? Uh, and we're using that to plan and, and follow this sort of continuous improvement cycle here where we, okay, let's, this page is, everybody's coming to this page, but it's buried three layers deep and people are having a hard time to get there. But every time we do a social media post about it, they come right to it, they donate. How do we make sure that we get that message front and center and that they, so that they can donate faster? That could be something like changing how the content's laid out. It could be putting calls to action on your homepage. It might even be changing what the actual homepage is. But we look at that stuff, we plan that stuff, and we develop that stuff out. And it's just this iterative, iterative process over time. So instead of waiting a couple of years to say, wow, you know, these are, these are the active parts of our website and nobody's using these pieces, we don't need them anymore. We probably never built the pieces we didn't need. And we've been able to grow and add value to the website on, a, on an ongoing basis. Uh, we'll talk through how these different, I, I gave a, a high level overview of this, but I'll, I'll turn it over to John so you can sort of get into the details of how these different phases sort of play out. Start with strategy uh, and it's over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. So I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper. We've kind of gone over these from a high level. First, we'll start with strategy. This is kind of where we lay the groundwork for your website. Uh, you know, the first step is targeted audience analysis. So who, who are you trying to reach? Existing donors, potential volunteers? people who are passionate about your cause, that sort of thing. It'll help focus your site's needs. Uh, next, we'll define clear website goals. Um, oh, we can go back to phase one still. Um, what you, you know, what do your visitors want to do after they land on your site? Do you want them to uh, donate? Do you want them to sign up for a newsletter? Do you want them to learn more about your programs, kind of zeroing in on those needs? And then once we know those, audience uh, that audience and those goals, then it's time for more of a content audit. So this means taking stock of all the existing content you have, you know, what can be repurposed for the website? What needs to be created fresh? This is, um, you know, helps ensure that your website has high quality, relevant content uh, that, you know, informs and um, activates your visitors. And then the last step of phase one is the site structure. So imagine this is kind of like your website skeleton here, we'll map out the main pages, subpages, and how they all connect and interact. Um, so phase one is all about laying out that solid foundation um, for the website and then moving that all forward. 
which then brings me to phase two. So <clears throat> now that we've kind of got a clear strategy in place, uh, next would be building your Launchpad website. So a key element here is your content management system. Think of this as kind of like the engine that powers your website. And we mainly utilize WordPress, which uh, you may have heard of at least before. Uh, it's a powerful CMS that allows us to customize it for your needs during development. So the results allow you to easily add, edit, update your website content without needing extensive coding knowledge or something like that. Um, but a great website isn't just about functionality. It's also about creating a positive user experience, which we've already kind of gone over. Um, we work with our design professionals who understand the unique needs of nonprofits, and then they're going to help create a website that's, you know, visually appealing, easy to navigate, and also it's going to be optimized for mobile and other device sizes. Um, and we understand the importance of the integration. And it's here that we can help set up those initial integration tools you already use, like uh, whatever uh, donor management software or email marketing you might already use. And this will streamline that workflow and ensure that all your data is talking to each other. So with like all of these pieces designed and dev out, we'll test your site across multiple platforms, devices, make sure no matter where a user is coming from that they can reach you. And then, um, so we've got phase two, we've got your site kind of up and running, but um, you know, the work is not done yet by any means. Uh, phase three is all about that continuous improvement that we saw in that first kind of diagram. So this is where uh, your website is um, devved out and breathing and living, um, but we want to make sure that that can adapt alongside your nonprofit. So here it's where we're going to evaluate that performance based on those initial goals that we did set in phase one. You know, did your website drive the numbers of donations you were hoping for? Did it attract new volunteers? Whatever that may be. Um, by tracking these website analytics, we can see what's working and what needs tweaking. Another element uh, is collecting like UX feedback from audience to learn more about your users. So what do visitors find helpful? What's confusing? Uh, phase three is all about that analyzing and planning kind of those big or small updates to meet your goals, improve the UX, uh, and continue to make sure that your site is meeting those goals. Uh, yeah, so now we've kind of gone over some of the uh, website process and its phases. Let's talk a little bit about some of your options for taking your website to the next level. So we offer full growth-driven website services, uh, specifically designed for nonprofits. This is a, uh, this is great for organizations who have outgrown their current CMS, uh, want to redesign an existing WordPress website, or are looking for more complex features like uh, membership portals or uh, e-commerce, things like that. Um, we do use, like we've discussed, a growth-driven design methodology. Think of it kind of as that iterative process where we work closely with you to develop a website that's based on strategy and that feedback loop. Um, you know, a site is an investment in your nonprofit. It is uh, used as a tool for fundraising, for volunteer recruitment, and spreading awareness about your cause or whatever you're looking to do. And if you're not looking for a full website, we do offer maintenance packages that we'll be discussing later on. Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in right here too, John, just because I know, you know sometimes this is like sticker shock to some people. It's like, wow, it's fifteen thousand dollars. But if you think about, um, you know, what we talked about as for, as far as the need to constantly be updating a website or redoing a website, uh, this is certainly a cost saving initiative over time. It's also, as John said, like an investment in um in your overall business. So, you know, for a lot of the businesses that we saw in during COVID and even coming out of COVID, where they'd invested a bunch of time in their brick and mortar, their locations, or their in person. Uh, and had spent little to no thought or time or budget on their website. Now the website's the the main place that they're attracting new people, attracting you know volunteers or even serving their community. Um, and it you know it it really shows. Um, but also when we look at things, when we look at uh, engagements here, at tap, we kind of look at things in three different ways. There's the you know the this growth driven methodology, which is like this. It's like let's get you enough to get started. You know, this is going to give you access to our creative director and our entire creative team that's going to develop and design a website specifically for you. We're not pulling a template off the shelf. We're not, you know, use, repurposing a website from Squarespace or something like that. This is a cu completely custom design, a uh, certain number of pages, and then the templates that go along with that. Um, then we do like a, what I'll call like a more custom design, which would be something that's like if your website is really a function of your business, that's going to be something that you know, maybe you manage a number of employees on that, or you've got sort of like an intranet, or it's like a learning management system, or, you know, a mobile app component, that's probably not, that's not going to fall in this same 
in this same piece, like the same $15,000 price range. It's going to take a kind of custom scope, custom scope and going to involve uh, a different team. Same sort of, you know, uh, the high, still high level, senior level resources, but you're probably going to have more database type engineers and things like that on the back end. Uh, and then we have like the sort of maintenance and ongoing packages, which, we, which we'll cover more later in the webinar, but that's the kind of stuff where, hey, you've got a good website right now, just needs some improvements. Uh, maybe you're not the person internally that can make those changes, or you've had someone internally, but they're they're no longer there, uh, or you've been using another agency, um, and they just haven't been kind of, you know, kind of fitting, fitting with your organization or understanding the needs of your organization. And that still follows the same, we each one of those scenarios still follow the same growth driven approach we just we just talked through. It's taking an understanding of the baseline and, and seeing where you are now, putting a plan in place with you and then executing against that plan over time. So we don't wanna just be order takers that are saying, yes, I'll add this to your homepage. Sure, I'll make that update to your uh, you know, your team page. We will we'll work with you, we partner with you every step of the way to, to, to guide you in the right direction, follow best practices and make sure that your your site or your um, you know your web platform is constantly being improved. And I'll turn it back over to John to share some examples of, so I think what we'll go through here is more like before and after um, examples of, of some of the sites we've done in the past year or so, uh, and give some details on like where they started, what changes we made and, and, and the success that they've had coming out of that. Yeah, so first we'll talk about uh, the Down Syndrome Association of Central Texas. So their mission is, you know, provide resources and support individuals with uh, Down syndrome and their families, medical professionals, and the community at large. Uh, they came to us with a website that was pretty bland and also confusing on the left. Um, it was difficult for visitors to find the information they needed, especially families who were seeking those resources. Um, so we knew we wanted to create a website that was not only informative, but also you know, user-friendly and welcoming. Um, so we want to make sure that people could be able to see the cards displayed easily. Um, whatever their most important resources were, were laid out easily on the front page. Um, and then on the next slide, we'll kind of dive in further. So we want, really wanted to make sure we improved that user experience, right? So we used um, a system of custom post types. Kind of think of that. Um, think of it as like a specialized categories for content. Uh, to organize their vast library of resources. So these resources were categorized by audience. So medical providers, parents and families, and educators. Uh, categories, so things like educational, community-based, advocacy, et cetera. Uh, and then further, even further by type. So this made it for visitors to find exactly what they were looking for and also for the client to keep the resources organized and accessible to them on the back end. Uh, we also enhanced their calendar functionality. We used a relational, relational database, essentially a way to connect different pieces of information to display their key events and activities. So now visitors could search by event type, by age group, by the date, um, and those events pages could also display similar related events based on tagging. This way, no one can miss an important workshop or, you know, a support group meeting or fundraising event. And then lastly was the membership. Um, we completely revamped the membership section of the website. The benefits of the, of the memberships were clearly outlined and the application form was streamlined using Gravity Forms um, for a much more user-friendly experience. So by implementing kind of all these different changes, their website was uh, much more concise and understandable, making it a truly valuable resource center for them. The website is now much easier for them to navigate, both for the client and um, the other end. Um, and the information is clear and concise. Um, and finding support is just, you know, a couple clicks away instead of the complex thing that it was before. So now moving on to the next one. Uh, next one we'll jump into is called One Pulse Academy. Um, some background, One Pulse Academy is an organization committed committed to uh, honoring the victims of the Pulse nightclub tragedy and inspiring community in action. Uh, their educational arm, One Pulse Academy, offers a variety of programs and resources to promote safety and inclusion and understanding. Uh, One Pulse Academy approached us needing a website that would be flexible and adaptable. They wanted a platform to easily showcase their existing educational programs and add new ones as they developed them. Um, 
our goal was to create a website that facilitated like accessible outreach. So th some things we did um, using WordPress, Elementor, and custom post types, we created templated formats. This allowed OnePulse to upload their previous educational um, programs and new ones within just few clicks. Um, so need, no need to start from scratch on everything. They were up and running fairly quickly. Um, you know, also we implemented features to make their programs searchable, uh, sortable, and filterable. Now people could easily find those programs based on the topic that they gave it or the date or the target audience. Um, this allowed it to make sure that the right person found the right program. Uh, also making sure that their website was grant, uh, met the uh, grant requirements outlined by their their funders. Also, um, the website wasn't just about showcasing kind of the past programs, obviously. We integrated features to encourage new future engagement with uh, events and programs. Visitors could sign up for things like email alerts, uh, register for upcoming workshops, and become more involved with them. So by creating these user-friendly and adaptable uh, changes, Academy has been able to further share their knowledge and build a strong community online. Uh, the website is now kind of like a central hub for the educational resources for the Academy. Um, and now I'll hand it off to Kyle, who's going to talk about a different one. Thanks, John. Um, <laughs> this one's a pretty, pretty typical type of engagement for us. This is a much smaller organization. So the, the two we've just talked about, a little bit larger organizations, some of them have like uh, either state or federal funding. Uh, these are the next couple would be more typical of like a smaller to mid-sized nonprofit. This one specifically called Green Lake Preschool came to us and they'd had a very uh, run of the mill basic website. They were actually managing two different websites and having a hard time trying to keep a consistent look and feel. They managed them on two separate platforms. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't keep it up to date. And as you see on the next slide, like the before and after is pretty drastic. Sure, you could get some of the information from the, the example you see on the left, uh, but we organized it in a more, um, you know, I'll say brand brand fit and better, like higher level visibility, calling out the the, the main benefits as you see um, through a different through text treatment as well as like sizing and just layout in general. Uh, and what was what's really interesting about these this group is, as I said, they have a few different websites. So they have two different preschools currently they run, and their goal was to add more preschools over time. So we put them on a system called WordPress multi-site, which allows you to have multiple sites that can be managed under one kind of parent organization. So the way that we build them is is the same, the sort of the the out the uh, like the outline of the website, the theme, the layout, and everything is very similar. But the colors, the background, the the styling can change from site to site. The content changes from site to site, and it's easy to manage. Um, you know, from one central place, so it, they can train either different preschool, uh, I guess, administrators or a centralized resource to manage these websites quickly and easily and get them up to speed, as well as as they add new um, new locations, new schools, it's easy for them to roll up, spin up another website without them having to come back to us, without them having to go find another agency or another designer. Um, through some integrations that we sort of talked about earlier, they also have integrated their website with systems like Loom and Calendly, which they use uh, directly through the website to, for member for member support. So they can schedule calls, they can uh, record, they record the meetings, they record how tos, trainings, things like that. Um, for either uh, prospective attendees, the, the attendees' parents, or uh, caregivers that that function within their system. Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so this will be our last example that we'll be focusing on is the uh, National Trafficking Sheltered Alliance, NTSA. NTSA is a uh, leading organization working to combat human trafficking and supporting survivors. Uh, one of their key goals was to create strong uh, online community and advocates for the advocates and service providers. So they approached us needing a website that would, you know, facilitate memberships and encourage that collaboration. So first we integrated a membership management plugin called uh, Buddy Boss into their website. This plugin handles registration, payment processing, and that access control for member only content. This created a secure and user-friendly member portal where advocates could connect, share resources, and stay up to date on the latest. Um, also utilizing that membership, also developed a public facing member directory for those who wanted it. Um, this allowed advocates and service providers to create profiles and uh, that could showcase their areas of expertise. Uh, and then lastly, 
a tiered event registration and pricing. This allowed them to host exclusive events for premium members and offer discounted registrations for others. So this type of flexibility increased their participation on, in their events and their fundraising efforts. So in, by implementing all these different types of solutions, uh, they've now been able to grow as a resource and boost their memberships, better serving their community. Um, you know, we have gone over a lot so far today, but um, we're almost we're getting closer to the end with that. And uh, on the next slide, as we wrap up, I just wanted to go over a few more of our uh, services. Um, so, you know, I spoke briefly about this earlier, but what happens after you launch your website or what if you just need help keeping it up to date in general? Um, Kyle had kind of touched about this a little bit earlier, but this is where our maintenance website uh, services come in. We're here to kind of make your website that make sure that your website's always performing at its best so you can focus on what you guys need to do. So with this, um, briefly, some things you could do um, include have our team handle things from you know fixing broken links to building new pages for your upcoming events. You're gonna have an, a dedicated account manager who's gonna oversee your maintenance requests. And, and you'll do all this using our ticketing system to track and manage your requests. You'll get uh, timelines within 48 hours so you always know what to expect next. And then here you're going to see a tiered list of our packages um, with more details. So the essentials package, this package is perfect starting point for nonprofits who want to ensure their website is running smooth and functional. You're going to get like enhanced uh, readability and performance. We can make uh, tweaks and graphic updates for you guys. And then the uh, upgrades package starting at 99, 999 a month. Uh, this package is everything in the essentials package plus some additional features so you'll get our design and ux team who can build out uh, some custom web pages or landing pages and help streamline your donations and then the premium package this is our most extensive it's perfect for nonprofits with complex website needs um, it includes everything from the previous packages plus um, you know even further design needs and systems custom applications and much more um, all these are you know a great offer to ensure that your website is staying up to date and I'll hand it back over to Kyle. Who might be frozen? Is there Kyle? John? Can you hear me? I can. Okay, I think Kyle froze. Okay, but I I heard a buddy boss. What what are your thoughts on buddy boss? Because I thought it was kind of busy. I I so I went to it myself. And I was like, oh no, this is too complicated for me. What are your thoughts on that? No, buddy boss is actually really great. Buddy boss, you're able to do a lot of different things. It can be as complex as you need it to be. It can be almost like a Facebook social media platform, or it can just be a simple um, way that you can just lock some content behind a login form essentially so then people have to log in before they can get to specific content yeah and i saw that it, you can do courses on there too on the yeah the i mean you can kind of set it set it up to be whatever you need it to be it's a very powerful tool wow that's incredible that's incredible it's awesome came back can you guys hear me now yes yeah we can hear you welcome okay, back yeah. drop that for a second um so i, I wanted to i wanted to quickly just build on what john was talking about and and Give, some, give an outline of like what the different packages are for, who, who they're best for. Um, the Nonprofit Essentials Package, you'll see this on the website. I'll show you where to get this on, on TechSoup's website. Uh, the Nonprofit Essentials Package is really for like, you know, you just need to keep the website, sort of the lights on. You don't have the, the technical background or skills to make kind of periodic updates yourself. And you want to make sure that, that stuff stays, uh, you know, online, nothing's broken. Um, but if you're not making a lot of content updates or things like that, that's the probably a good package for you. It's just, it's, it's really just, it's really peace of mind. Um, you know, we, we will always keep in, in mind best practices. We'll always follow, you know, your style guide and everything like that. So you'll get that, you know, you still get those senior level resources, but it's really sort of like a, uh, a kind of ad hoc thing. Um, we really see the value growing as you move, kind of move up those, those different scales. So it's all, all these are going to be less than the cost of like having an internal resource or having a full-time employee and typically uh, less than, than you would see with any other agency. Um, as, as John, I think mentioned, you can make unlimited requests. 
And what we do, what we help you do is like outline those requests and prioritize those things with you. That doesn't mean we're going to be able to accomplish all of those requests in that period of that month or whatever it might be. But like we ask for as much as you can give us, you can say, here's all the things that I want to do. We help you, we, help, we work with you to prioritize those things and say, okay, this month we'll do X, Y, and Z. Once that gets complete, we'll do, uh, you know, whatever letters come after X, Y, and Z. <laughs> and then, keep, you know, kind of keep that, that rolling ahead. Um, the upgrades package and the premium package are really as allows us to get our dig in deeper, get our hands dirty uh, and start to make, you know, more significant changes for you all and, and put less back on you. Right. So if we you now you have access to like our UX team, that's going to build out custom web pages for you. So this is following that growth driven approach we talked about earlier. So let's say we've launched your website or you already have a website out there. This allows us to really get in there and add more value to that and work with you to identify what those needs are over time. And then the upgrades package is really like um, almost like the equivalent of having like a, a part-time person on your team that is is dedicated just to, you know, to website web development. These are the, the, the if, if your website is where you're getting a lot of donations, where you're engaging with, um, you know, volunteers on an ongoing basis, um, or is really like a function of your business, this is really where the, the packages start and, and are the best fit for organizations like that. We also do offer custom packages. These are just what, what are listed on TechSoup's website, but feel free to reach out uh, you know, if you have any questions about something, us customizing something for you. On this webinar, um, one thing we are doing is we're offering an, a, a free upgrade to the next level for the first month. So if you purchase like the Nonprofit Essentials package, uh, wait till we get done the webinar so we can make sure it's a good fit for you and, and feel free to reach out to us to make to, so that we you know, if I identify like what needs you have, because there's certain, you know, limitations, but um, we will we'll upgrade you to the next tier um, for that lower tier price uh, for the first month. And if you want to customize a package, we can also look at what that would, what that would take for you as well. Uh, but you'll save, you know, between $500 to $1,000 in the upgrade by just doing that for that first month. And a lot of times that's enough to sort of get the, hit the ground running, get the ball rolling. Um, I will jump into the rest of my presentation talking about the where this is a good fit. Um, so these services are really only geared towards people using WordPress, whether your website's currently on WordPress or you'd like to migrate to WordPress, we do have migration packages. We can move pretty much any website over to WordPress um, and over to our hosting platform as well. We'll talk through the benefits of that in a second too. Um, when, when working with us and as part of these packages through our hosting and security package, uh, you'll also get access to a lot of the licenses that we have. This is this license bundle uh, that we use with each website that we engage with is more than a twelve hundred dollar value. If you were to go buy it yourself, um, some of the some of these examples are shared here. These are best in breed plugins. They're the most secure ones you're going to get. They're the most widely supported plugins. They're updated. We keep, help you keep them patched and updated, and you get enterprise licenses to these um, as long as you're in a hosting and maintenance retainer with us. So. Things like Buddy Boss that would cost you, you know, $799 a year, I think, um, for a license would be included as part of that platform. The events calendar, same sort of thing. Um, I think those ones creep up in the four or $500 a year to get access just to their core features. We have the full enterprise license and we, we manage you all under our agency license um, as long as you're, you're as I said, hosting and, and uh, maintaining with us. Uh, on this screen, you also see the Elementor logo. Elementor is a drag and drop page builder. It is by far the best in breed. Um, we use that to build or allow our clients to build and manage a lot of their websites on their own so they can really see what they're doing when they're moving elements around. Uh, and it makes it so that they don't have to be design experts or, or know how to write website code to get the, the website to look and feel um, the way it was designed or meant to, meant to be designed originally. So uh, with that, I'll talk through the hosting and security packs we offer. So this is, again, also for WordPress websites only. We do offer a hosting and security package. It's $124 a month for most websites. If you have a very high traffic or very, a lot of high traffic website, high traffic would be something that gets probably about more than 100,000 visits a month um, or a website that has that's just stores a ton of, of um, like video or documents on it, it might not fit this, but this fits, I would say 95% of the websites that we encounter. Uh, and with that, you get the access to all those plugins and, and things that we just talked about, as well as um, like security backups, um, a let's, a SSL certificate. Uh, we manage your PHP updates, like version updates. This is probably super nerd speak for a lot of you. It's just 
just so just know that the website would be secured by us, um, managed by or you know overseen by us, um, and offsite backups are kept. What we don't do as part of full transparency as part of the hosting and security package, we don't fix things that break. Uh, you know, we will identify things that are broken. We will keep, we will help work with you to keep things from breaking. This is more of sort of like, I would, I would call it like a warranty service so that you know we're, we're there, we're available, and we can help you solve those problems. But, you know, if if you're working on your website and you do something and breaks, and that, that breaks it, um, you know, that, that would fall into like one of our support packages or like a customs, custom uh, engagement. Uh, but keeping the website online, making sure it stays secure, making sure it's backed up. Uh, that that falls on us, that that burden falls on us. And again, you get access to those different licenses. Um, I'm gonna actually share, share the website to just kind of show you guys how to get to our services. So if you're on TechSoup's website, um, you go to, if you go to services, anything that falls under the website services, the digital marketing, and coming soon, there will be an AI services drop down here as well. That's all, that's all really comes directly to us. Um, the faster way to get to some of these products is going to the product catalog and finding TechSoup as the donor company. And then you'll see all TechSoup's kind of, uh, I'll say in-house services here. You're gonna to wanna to find the ones that are website marketing services. You can see there's 24 uh, different services, packages, things like that, that we offer as part of this, all at the discounted nonprofit rate. You do have to be a TechSoup member to get access to these rates and these these services. But as I mentioned today, if you were to go on and purchase one of these um, monthly services, like monthly subscriptions, um, please do reach out to us before you do that. Tell us you're going to do that. Let us know you you saw this on the webinar. You can tell them that it was the July 9th webinar, the website, website services webinar, the TAP Network webinar. You can tell them Kyle told you or John told you or Aretha told you. Uh, and anything that works for you to, to, to get that through, but just say, hey, I, you know, I'm interested in the, the upgrade package that you guys talked about in the webinar. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll send you the right link to sign up. And that way we'll just track that. Okay. This is the right, you know, if you bought this one, we're going to give you the, the 999 package this month as, as part of that first month for that. And then I just want to leave it through to you all for any questions. There was a comment in the chat by Nigel. He came in late because he had trouble signing in, but he's definitely in much need of the services and he put his number in this website. But can we put a link in the chat the best way for him to reach out to you guys? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, the, actually, so I'll put the link in the chat. It's also in this webinar. So if you go through here, like the end, um, you can just book a consultation with us by just clicking the link that will be shared. Um, just for web ser website services. This is just going to take you to uh, our landing page, which I'll just drop in the chat. Uh, and that'll give you just, just tell us some information. Tell us what kind of what your need is. Make sure you mention that, um, you know, you join this webinar and then that'll uh, kind of fast track you to, to someone on our team here. Awesome. So Nigel, I hope you're able to click on that. If you click on that, you won't leave the webinar. I just want to say, I know that I learned a lot just, just listening to you guys. Um, and it's just amazing that the services that TechSoup offers, I, I've been a part of TechSoup before I even became a webinar producer, like 12 years I was volunteering on the other side, you know, as a um, ambassador for TechSoup. And so seeing all these services is just incredible. So Thank you, TAP Network, for all that you offer. And um, no questions. Uh, if you have a question, you have a, uh, another minute, a few minutes. We'll put them in the chat if you'd like. I do want to say to everybody who said that they were the only one managing your website, um, I think you guys offer a free consultation. Is that right, Cal? We do, yeah. If you, same thing with that link. If you fill that that form out on that link. Um, we'll reach out to you, schedule a time for that that consultation, talk through your needs. Yeah, I think that'll be worth it. So I don't see any other further questions in the chat. Um, Cal or John, you have any last words? No, nope, just thank you all for for joining the day and, and sitting through and yeah. hearing us talk about the, the services and, and we look forward to to working with with all of you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye.